Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord spoke to Daniel in a vision. He said, at that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such has never occurred since the nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in that book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood will not offer upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. Indeed, I have a God who perish. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. 
My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because of that my right hand shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad. My spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy. And in your right hand, pleasures forevermore. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all times those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, 
Do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. Amen. Amen. Today is the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also the second to last Sunday in our liturgical year. And so, it happens to be the last time that we will read Mark's Gospel. Next week is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. We call it Christ the King Sunday, or I like the Catholic title, Christ King of the Universe Sunday, just to make it extra clear, his domain area. Um, but that has a special reading from John's Gospel, which we read on special occasions. So this is the last time that we will read Mark. And it's a proper farewell passage for Mark, because sometimes scholars and commentators will refer to this as one of the endings of Mark. If you know, Mark has several endings at the actual end with the tomb and how that all concludes itself. But this is sometimes called an ending of Mark because Jesus is talking about things that will happen much long after those three days. It's, it's kind of the last chronological thing to be mentioned by Jesus in this gospel. So Jesus and his disciples are in Jerusalem. They've been journeying to there from Galilee for quite some time through Samaria and then through Jericho, they came into the city. They were received by the crowds. Jesus, they, they laid palms down for Jesus. They debated, or he's debated with Pharisees and Sadducees, scribes, other rabbis, rich people, politicians, you name it. He's ruffled the feathers. He's also gone into the temple and overturned the, uh, the tables, which might be equivalent to walking into the New York Stock Exchange and unplugging all the power today. So he's back there at the scene of the crime, and his, one of his disciples comments to him, Rabbi, what beautiful buildings we have here in Jerusalem in this temple complex. I mean, look, look at it. Isn't it amazing? And it was amazing. If you've ever seen a model of Herod's temple, it's, it's gorgeous. And it was a vast improvement, you could say, that Herod had made from the original temple that was built by Ezra and Nehemiah and Zerubbabel at the end of the Old Testament. There's some comments in the Old Testament about people weeping who remembered seeing Solomon's temple that were disappointed by the second temple's lackluster appearance. But Herod wanted to change that, and, so, and he wanted to make Judea great again, you could say. And so he, he has all these building campaigns. He raises uh, an army like never before. He's got uh, political intrigue going. And so the, the temple is looking good. But I imagine that Jesus has a moment where he looks at this disciple and thinks to himself, don't you realize that the reason this temple looks so beautiful is because Herod is taxing his own people into oblivion, that, that Rome is forcing us to cooperate with what they think Judaism should look like, that their high priest that they put up in that temple. And so it's kind of a bittersweet feeling for Jesus, I imagine, to be there in the house of the Lord and to know that Yes, it looks beautiful. Yes, these stones are huge. But those stones were put there by the sufferings of the people that they were supposed to serve. And they were put there with the money that was supposed to be for their own food. And they starved so that we could have marble and gold on this building. And so he says to the disciple, he goes even further than that. He doesn't just criticize it. But then he, he joins Jeremiah and some of the other Old Testament prophets and says, not only is this temple somewhat vain, but it's doomed. And it's doomed soon. And all of this tension, all of this, all this that we see, the Herod trying to make his way and Caesar trying to make it his way and the people just trying to exist and live and eat, it's going to come to a head. And this temple is going to come crashing down just like it did before. 
And that's exactly what happened. Less than 40 years, a generation's time, just like he says at the end of this passage, a war starts. It breaks out in Caesarea um, over some issue about a synagogue being built too close to a Greek marketplace. And it, a war breaks out and it engulfs the entire region. And Judea becomes chaos. All, all of the rebels and the zealots that we sometimes hear about in the New Testament, they form full-fledged factions and militias. And they fight against Rome. And then they fight with each other. And Rome comes with their vast legions that the Jews could have never hoped to conquer. And they squish them in and they push them into Jerusalem, and Jerusalem becomes hell on earth. And there's so many people in the city, they starve, and the factions turn on each other, and all Rome has to do is wait and invade and burn the temple down. And that's what happens. And Jesus saw it coming. Sometimes we forget that Jesus was an apocalyptic preacher, and he started an apocalyptic movement. Now, this doesn't mean that early Christianity was a doomsday cult or that they were obsessed with the end of the world. But it means that they were resistant, just like Jesus was. They were resistant to a status quo that left out anybody. They were re resistant to a system that didn't work for absolutely everybody. And Jesus sees that all of these things are going to eventually culminate in something bad. And even after the temple gets destroyed and the Jewish-Roman wars take place, Christianity continues its apocalyptic tone. We see this in the early Christians, and even after Christianity becomes legalized by Rome and adopted as the official uh, religion of the empire, a lot of Christians reject this kind of new status, and they go out into the deserts, and they become some of the first monks and nuns. And we still have monks and nuns today, and that is a legacy of our apocalypticism, our resistance to the way that the world is supposed to work. But Jesus gives us some tips for how to stay apocalyptic today. Because I think we see a lot of apocalyptic Christianity or apocalyptic religion in the bad ways. We see doomsday theorists. We see conspiracies engulfing people and making people obsessed about ridiculous things and interpretations of Bible passages that make no sense. And so that is not the way to be apocalyptic. Jesus says, don't be deceived. Many are going to come saying, I am he. Now, we don't have a lot of day, a lot of, you know, Jesus Christ syndrome as much as maybe back in the 70s or, or other days where people would literally say, I am Jesus Christ. But we do have preachers that say every now and then, oh, I know when Jesus is coming back, for sure. It's going to be, when was that one guy? May 21st on the 2018 or something, and then he had to redo it to September. Because you get one redo, and people still take you half seriously, and then you fade into oblivion. But... <laughs> So that's coming and saying, I am he. Or politicians that come and say, I am the Christian vote. If you vote for me, you're voting Christian. If you, vote for me, if you don't vote for me, you're not voting Christian. That's being deceived, buying into that. And so keeping our eyes on the real Jesus, the real one that came, and what he did, and how he lived, he didn't buy into the system. He stayed resistant to it up until the point of his death. How can we follow a life like that? And then the other piece of advice that Jesus gives us is don't be alarmed. So don't be deceived and don't be alarmed. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be wars, a lot of wars. There's going to be famines. There's going to be pandemics. It's not the end of the world just yet. It's, it, you know, we can't get caught into this idea that it is the doomsday, that this conspiracy theory that Bill Gates is secretly a lizard and, and is microchipping all of us and that everything's going to, you know, the spaceships are going to come down or whatever you might see on Facebook these days. That's the wrong kind of apocalypticism. The right kind of apocalypticism is buying into a world that works for everybody and rejecting a world that doesn't work for everybody. That's the world that Jesus wants, and that's the world that will lead to a land of peace no more wars between people, no more struggling, no more overtaxation. So don't be alarmed. Don't get caught up in the CNN news cycle, in the Fox News news cycle, in the MSNBC, in MSNBC, NPR, or Facebook, whatever we go to to get that little feeling of panic that for some reason we've become all addicted to. That's what we need to reject and become part of this movement that is going to lead to a new world of redemption, of reconciliation, and hope. Amen.
Almighty God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who have governed and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints and who have in entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those on our prayer list, including Mary, Elizabeth, David, Don, Patty, Katie, Margot, Robin, Donna, Marilyn, Earl, Bill, Linda, Susie, Sam, Chris, Anne. We pray for Dorothy, Bill, Carrie, Barb, Marty, Edward, Cindy, John, Frank, Marilyn, Andrew. We pray for, we pray for Maureen, Betsy, Megan, Bill, Jill, Stephanie, Hall, Gary, John, Craig, Harriet. We pray for Sarah, Jill, Dorothy, Connie, Kate, Bruce. We pray for Kimberly, Roger, Marilyn, Godfrey. Uh, we pray for Morgan, Tyson, Luker, Weiner, Murphy, Quinn, Irish, Newsom, Green, Murray, Miller, Delaney, Abrams, Miller, Linder, Yingling, Boca, Boha, Beisman, Saren, Butler, Butler, Frederick, Crawford, Johnson, Parkin, Vorwald, Bowles, Siphon, Siphonoli, Mixto, and we pray for Breaker. Um, we give thanks for the ministry of our Just Harvest, one of the compassion ministries this par parish supports. We also rejo rejoice in all the blessing of God bestows on us. Today we give special thanks for the birthdays of Michael Taylor, August Wenger, and Jeffrey Yingling, and for all other blessings. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this point, as you can see in the bulletin, we are going to be commissioning five of our new Stephen ministers. So I invite the Stephen ministers and leaders to come forward, those who are about to be commissioned as well, of course. Everyone else uh, may be seated for part of the service. Dear sisters and brothers, you have been equipped to serve as Stephen ministers at the Church of the Holy Comforter. St. Paul wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we have received from God. And whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Friends in Christ, each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. 
We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in this congregation who need to be comforted. As Jesus has responded to your needs, may you respond to the needs of others. As Jesus took upon himself the burdens of the world, may you be friends and companions to those who are burdened by the stress of daily life. As Jesus broke down barriers dividing the world from God, so may you be sources of healing and wholeness. As Christ has shown his care to you, may you help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own service and offering. Are you prepared to reach out in love and comfort for others as a sign of Christ's love for all people? Will you nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, to encourage, and to heal people in all situations and need. Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, will you support these persons in their ministry and pray for them to be faithful stewards of Christ? We will, God, God. will you welcome their ministry among us, allowing these ministers to work and walk with you as you face struggles in your lives that you might receive help and support from your brothers and sisters in Christ? You, Stephen ministers, will you serve faithfully as ministers in this congregation, offering the shalom of God to those in need? And now, one by one, I invite you to step forward. And please come and lay hands upon it. Jonathan, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that they and you may grow in his wholeness. Amen. Susan, may you see Christ in all people and be moved by his life to care for them as you would care for Christ himself. Amen. Merrily, may Christ shower his love upon you and sustain you in the ministry that lies before you. Amen. Amen. When, may the redeeming, renewing love of God bring you peace in your service to God's people. Amen. Amen. Carter, may God bless you richly, that you might be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion and mercy, we ask you to embrace these, our sisters and brothers, with your love. Having bestowed upon them gifts and talents for service, Empower them to use these gifts to help build your holy reign and to bring about peace and comfort. Imbue them with your Holy Spirit that they might pray for those whose lives they are privileged to share and be signs of your unfailing presence and love. Make them vessels of your healing, sustaining grace. Make them a blessing to this community and those for whom they care. Sustain them now and always in their service and ministry. Keep all of us strong in the faith you have given us, that we might seek and serve you and each other all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Will the congregation please stand? Please face them. And would you please join me in welcoming our new Stephen ministers and supporting our Stephen ministry in general. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
God's grace be with all on this beautiful second to last Sunday of our year, as Carter mentioned, and welcome especially to visitors, guests, new friends who are with us, whether you're here for the first time or coming back after some time away or here to support one of our new Stephen ministers. Welcome to all. Uh, I did want just to emphasize, as always, the prominence, the importance uh, of Stephen ministry, as most everybody knows, for the last Ten and a half years, uh, Stephen Ministry has provided support, comfort, compassion, and companionship with those uh, in a variety of different circumstances and challenges. Literally dozens upon dozens of people in this parish and even beyond it have been embraced by God's love as a result of this ministry. So I hope you really will take very seriously your vows to do all you can to support Stephen Ministry, and if you are in a situation where you need that kind of support, please, please let one of the Stephen leaders, one of the clergy know. But again, congratulations to our, our new ministers and welcome. There are many announcements. I'll try to be brief. The first is a reminder that, of course, the, we have two outreach endeavors taking place right now. The one that's being led by the 6th through 8th grade class, which is gathering together travel-sized toiletries for... Uh, to give to uh, the people who are ministered to by Care for Friends. There is a receptacle right inside the front office doors for those. We have a wonderful collection, but we'll always take more. And of course, a reminder of that, we are in the final stretch of our Thanksgiving offering, uh, outreach offering for Primo Center for uh, Women and Children. Uh, that uh, is the effort wherein you see the brown paper bags and the narthex and the parlor and in the main hall. If you haven't had a chance and still hope to participate in that by buying some of the items on the suggested list, please do so. This Friday is the deadline, and in fact, we're going to be delivering those uh, bags and turkeys and hams and so forth this, this Friday. So uh, please know that uh, it's almost Thanksgiving, uh, so please participate if you haven't already and, and want to. We also still do need drivers to help transport the, uh, the goods down to, uh, to Primo Center. So if you're interested in taking part in that, please talk to Carter, who's over here, or Stephanie Fargo. I'm not sure if Stephanie is here today. Um, and they will help coordinate that. A reminder also that on, in only 11 days, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving Day, which is a feast in the church calendar. We always celebrate it at 10 o'clock with a special Eucharist here in the church, one of the loveliest days of the year, some wonderful hymns, some comforting and inspiring uh, lessons, uh, and it's the perfect way to begin a day of giving thanks by thanksgiving, by, by celebrating that here, offering our gratitude to God for all of God's blessings. There are several other announcements to which I would simply invite, I would simply invite you to read uh, and now I'm going to go off script. <laughs> On October 3rd or 4th, 1973, Father Wayne Johnson, the then comparatively new rector of Holy Comforter, paid a visit to the hospital to visit a family he had not yet met who had just had their third child, but he somehow got word they were Episcopalians. And so he said to them, after visiting them and blessing their new baby, Tori, said, and I will see you in a couple of weeks in church on Sunday. Just a given fact that they were going to come to Holy Comforter, and they did, 48 years ago. I'm referring to Barbara and Bill Halgen, who, as many know, today lead to move to Fairhope, Alabama, after those 48 years in this congregation. One would be hard-pressed to come up with any couple in the history of this church that has had the impact that Barbara and Bill have. They are the only couple, both of whom have served as senior wardens of this parish. They have helped implement education for ministry. They have strengthened the men's ministry, found, helped found the dad's group, the Saturday morning men's Bible study. Variety of different opportunities for women to grow in spirituality. Uh, Bill has taught confirmation through the last six cycles with me. Uh, and it is uh, with a very deep sorrow 
but also for them joy, that today we bid them all of God's blessings, all of God's love, as they venture forth literally this afternoon to drive partway to Alabama. Uh, we don't normally do this, uh, we don't recognize folks, because we don't always know exactly when people are leaving. But Barbara and Bill, as we all know, have been um, vitally important and precious to this entire faith community for nearly half a century. So I want to say thank you to Father Johnson for that visit, and thank you to Barbara and Bill for all they have done and been among us for all of these years. So please join me in thanking you. Now I'd like to invite our senior warden up for just a little more. Good morning. morning. Well, I'm sure you have all heard at this point our super sad news about the retirement of our dear Father Parkin, who is too shy to mention it, and... um, focusing on the Helgens instead. And um, we just wanted to thank Father Parkin for the incredible 11 years that we have had with Father Parkin. And we're so thrilled that we have seven more months. And um, I think that there's, there's an extraordinary turnout today. So I think everyone's trying to get their last glimpses. I think for the whole next seven months, maybe we can do this and all be getting our last glimpses of, of Father Parkin. So um, thank you so much for everything as well. If we could have applaud- And um, the vestry just wanted me to say a few words that um, we're working really hard on this process. Um, we have the most fabulous vestry of all time, so I think, I think we're in good shape. Um, we've put a process in place. We've already met a couple of times. We have a couple more um, meetings already scheduled and planned. We're working with the archdiocese. They have processes, et cetera, um, that we need to follow as well. And um, everybody's, everybody's doing a great job and working hard, so I just wanted to give you that confidence and also to just notice how well the search process turned out last time. We got this guy. So, um, so anyway, uh, no worries, we got this.
Wherefore we praise you. Join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave the thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. What? And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive the rest of us Lead us not into the tradition, but to the rest of the kingdom. For that is the kingdom of the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
page 11 of the bulletin, praying with those who are worshiping with us virtually, let us pray. Bye. My loving Lord, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I cherish you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you at the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually to my heart. Perhaps and strengthen you with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and the life of God. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of God.
you today? Do you have people with you today? Hi, I'm Heath. Nice to meet you. Your son and grandson. Okay. Great. So nice. Um, where do they, where do you all live? Okay. Okay. Yeah, appreciate that. That's that's cool. Cool. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's cool. <laughs> what I go for, you know. A wonderful sermon. Thank you so much. And I love it that you went a little bit more slow because we hear more like, Oh, that's fantastic. Oh my gosh, let's go out and kill the cows. <laughs> That was great. Thank you. Yep. Hmm? Oh, the Primo Center? I'm I think that's in Rogers Park. Is it? Yeah. Friday, I think early afternoon. They want it in the morning, but I haven't found a single person. The nineteenth, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's um, C A Shram at holycomforter.org. C A R A M. Uh, it's on the website. <laughs> it's in the bulletin, actually, too. Yep. Um, but yeah. We'll. Uh, Maybe I'll, maybe I'll post something on Facebook, too, so keep an eye on our Facebook. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, though. A lot. Thank you, Maureen, so much. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, Reverend. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. wasn't about the widows. I know. I know. That was a rare mess up on Jason's part, actually. I didn't mention it. He got the lectionary text wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? Don't tell anybody. I know it was. Yeah, it was. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate it. Sir, how are you? Nice to see you, sir. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Got it. <laughs> Sir, great job. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, appreciate yes, that. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you. Really Didn't get too nerdy for you. No, no, no I right. loved your little show. We can save, that, save that for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, uh, no, wonderful. Awesome. Hope to see you doing more of that. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Are you guys in visiting for a while? or? Just the weekend. Nice. And I'll be back for Thanksgiving. Okay, cool. Right yeah. on. Yeah. Nice. We'll be around. Oh, well, have a good day in this dreary weather. Yes. <laughs> mm. well, well, otherwise, I'll see you uh, on yeah. the Zoom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice to see you. Have a good week. Thank you so yeah, much. Yes, you really did. Oh, Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I know you. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. You needed holy comfort here. Huh? Uh, probably. Or 
we can just go here soon. And we're, we can just go here soon. Oh, I'm gonna, I need to stop our Facebook stream. We're still streaming on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. That's good. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We're, we're still streaming live on Facebook right now, so I need to go shut that off. <laughs> Forgot to turn our stream off. 